Yeah, no, it's not. Yeah. So you asked two questions, though. Heard of them and know what they are. <laughs> Some of us might have heard of them. Okay, heard of them. Know what they are. I've used them on your website. Yeah, sort of. It's not that. Okay. Um, okay. So let's let's. How about like? Have heard of HTML? <laughs> <laughs> I'll go put your hands up. Okay. <laughs> have used HTML? Or, like really? Okay. Excellent. That's good. You guys have the perfect audience. Then. Other people in other languages. Okay. So the whole the whole principle of microformats is really just taking. Uh, HTML and extending it in really small ways so that you can express more concepts, more semantics than what's built into HTML to begin with. Okay. So like HTML doesn't have any notion of what's a person, doesn't have any notion of what's an event, what's to review, etc. And yet, if you look at web pages like blogs and you know even like corporate about pages or personal pages, there's like oh here's my contact info and like here are the events I'm going to. And of course on pages like Amazon, here's here are reviews of products and such. Um, and so. Wouldn't it be cool if you could actually share that information and move it around back and forth, um, rather than necessarily have to be in like all these different proprietary little silos? So that's that's the fundamental summary of like what microformats is for. To like solve that problem in a really simple way that anyone that's written HTML can pick up and learn in an afternoon, in an hour or less. Let's see how quickly we can do this. So, what do people come here to learn? Let me ask that question. What's new in performance? What's new? Okay. I want to learn how I can build events in my blog postings. Build events in your blog postings? Like, like for example, a blogging event is called or something. Somebody get their email address, their mobile phone telephone number. I want my blog to know that so that I can have them on a nice list. In the okay. That's a good one. Plus, how to read them and like, like, like read them or fetch them from other. How to read them? So like parse, parse or and write them. I guess. Start from the basics. Okay. Chris. Why use HTML to the next one? Right. Right. And then I would like to look at maybe maybe later on or tomorrow or something. Um, Open ID plus Jabber plus uh, <laughs> chat formats. Okay, wow. that's that's tomorrow. <laughs> 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 Nima, what's the community process and how to contribute to that format? The nice thing about standards is that there are so many to choose from. Yes. Um, <laughs> Excellent point. <laughs> when do I not want to use microformats? That's that's or which one do you use when they're responsible for the same data? For the same data. There's actually a good answer to that, so that's a good one. When? No. In the back. Uh, progress on a microformats in Zen Garden, and uh, also media uh, microformats like video, audio, podcast. There's progress on that. And okay, media info, right? Where is it heading? Yeah, it's a vision. Okay. Okay. That's a lot. 
Is somebody getting this down on the wiki? Who's the wiki scribe for, for today? For today's session? Uh, I'll get one. All right, go for it. So, Markham Stanford microformats. I want a quick thing like, why were they created? Why were they created? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Because I want to make sure that we get this down so that we can, I want to, you know, obviously use the same space to like wipe it off and keep doing more stuff. So. You got it? Okay. Okay, let's see. Oh, I mean, it's, it's a little handy, but I just want to pick up on that since there's more and more need for, for uh, some work on that stuff. That's actually specifically formats for SMS. Okay, so let's say we have some stuff on background, like why were they created. We have some stuff on basics, like of events, um, how do I write it, what kinds of data, uh, like basics of producing microformats. Um, then we have uh, sort of development level questions, like parsing them, HTML versus XML, um, so many standards to choose from. And then we sort of have what's new, which is like what's new, media, audio, video, where is the heading vision? Does that seem like a rough overview for folks? So let's see if we can, the basics, um, I guess why? Some basics and like developers, uh, and then new. So let's go for the why first. That that should be a really easy one to, to do really quickly. Um, anyone want to take a crack at answering that question? That's, that's familiar with my formats and has used them. Chris. Well, I mean, for one thing. Uh, most kids, even coming out of high school today, can read and write HTML. So it helps to use something that a lot of people can actually write, that they can read, that they can understand. It's a human, more or less human friendly format. As well, um, there is no other format around the world that is more widely supported in as many devices. So whether you're on your Blackberry or your cell phone or on a laptop, a computer, or wherever, you'll probably have some kind of browser of some sort that can actually read that data. So in terms of data portability, Microformats gives you a lot of legs, as well as encapsulating semantic information about the information that's actually stored on the page. And furthermore, um, you can build a great deal on top of HTML. So for example, scripts, Ajax things, um, you can actually subscribe and uh, like you can RSS to a regular HTML page when semantically fast. Um, and it's pretty lightweight you know, in terms of investing, and uh, it's a proven format and standard. Uh, would an example help people understand what we're talking about? Yeah. So we'll just, how about we start with an example of an H card? So H card is the microformat that is developed to represent people and companies and organizations. And it's based on the V card standard, which is nice because it meant that the folks who are involved with microformats didn't have to like reinvent a whole bunch of stuff that's already been argued about um, in the IETF uh, for years and years and years. So um, on web pages, you oftentimes have <coughs> things like, let's see if I can do one here. Okay. Div. I'm going to leave some space in here until later. Um, let's see. So I'll just use myself as an example. And maybe I'll use a VR you know, if I want to break the line. Um, and I'll put like my URL in here. If you know HTML and how to write HTML, this is all familiar stuff to you, right? In fact, you probably should do this instead. Right? And then I can put like my site. Okay. So even just that information on my site, I can mark up as saying, this is me, and this is my name, and this is my site. 
using the microformat called hcard. And the way you do this is this simple. We have a close size block where we just so one color whiteboard, monochrome. It's two colors. There, there's some color out there. The color in the assets. Yeah. Don't worry about multicolor ones in the information which you might find on any number of home pages or web pages or blogs into a microformat that then you could an H card that you could download that anyone reading your page could download an actual address book. This is all you have to do. On the on the element to closing the whole thing, you put class equals B card. Okay. Um, around your name, assuming you've just got like first name, last name, the simplest case, 8020, you mark that up with like a span, which is fine, class equals fn. In this case, I'm going to use a div and we get rid of that extra br as well. Okay. And then for your URL, you put class equals URL on the href. These class names actually correspond one to one to the names of the properties in, the, in B card, RFC twenty four twenty six. So in case you're wondering where these come from, B card, FN, URL, and then email. And then that's it. You're done. So that's literally all you have to do to take the information you already published on your web page about a, about a person, about yourself and add hcard to it. And then you can basically take that, redirect it through any number of um, either your own or uh, online web services that convert hcards to vcards, and create a link like this, a href. And I'm just going to use the one that Technorati hosts because that's one of the things we put there as a service for everyone to use. Just put refer here because that's the easiest way to do it. And you can call that add to address book. Right. Well, presumably it's HTML, so hopefully you're on a web page. Right? How do you do it with instances? Like just a different name on the same page. Right, so with multiple ones, right? So what this, one, what this link does is it sends the referring page, which you can actually put a whole URL here instead if you didn't want to just put referring. You can actually put the absolute URL, like in my case, contact.com and whatever. Uh, you know, in Chris's case, factoryjoe.net. No. No? Uh, Dot com. Okay. So he's got his own URL. Um, and anyone coming to your site and clicks this link, what it'll do is it'll automatically take this page, process it, convert these vCard names within property names within your markup into, into an actual B card and send that back to the client. Send that back to the person that's browsing, using the browser. And what will happen is their browser will go, hey, I just got a B card. I have no idea how to, how to open this myself. Ah, but however, your system has one or more applications that can open B cards. For example, the Apple Address Book or Microsoft Outlook. It'll automatically send it to one of those systems. They'll import it for you. And so now, if, it, if you're an individual, you can, this is an easy way to share you know, whatever contact information you want to share with anyone. Or if you're a company and you want people to add your company to their address book, it's a total no-brainer to do that. That's right. Because it sends it back. The server sends it back with the MIME type. I think it's like text slash directory, whatever the vCard MIME type is. Which then, all, the, all your systems these days should be configured to recognize that, ah, if I get an item with that MIME type, I should direct it to this application. 